Okay, could you tell us about uh, the years leading up to LIGO's first detection of gravitational waves, in particular uh, the moment and the feelings of this historical detection? I don't understand the question. <laughs> I mean, I worked on this for 50 years, so I don't know where in the 50 years you want me to talk about it. Yeah, in particular the final phase when the final phase. Yeah, okay. when okay. gravitational okay. waves were discovered, okay. which was the feeling and... Okay. I was not involved in LIGO in detail in the last few years. The discovery was made by a younger generation of physicists who had taken over from me and uh, some of the other founders. So when I woke up the morning that the signal came in, I had an email from a colleague uh, Christian Ott. I read the email. It said, go look at this internal LIGO web page. We might have a detection. I looked at it. It was too good to be true. Uh, the signal was strong, very high signal to noise ratio, 24. It was uh, uh, perfect, just what you would expect from two black holes spiraling together and merging. Uh, and uh, so I immediately thought this must be what we call a blind injection. It was inserted by certain members of the LIGO team uh, who do this to test the entire system. They move the mirrors just like they would be moved uh, by a gravitational wave. Uh, and so I responded to this young man who had told me about this. I said this must be a blind injection. He emailed me back and said it was not uh, the First searches had not officially begun, so there were no blind injections being made at that time. Uh, so I began to believe it might be real. My own emotional reaction was different from other people's. It was a feeling of deep satisfaction. It was not excitement. Uh, it was simply satisfaction that I had actually uh, focused my energies in just the right directions to help this uh, happen. Uh, over a period of uh, 50 years of my career. Perfect. And uh, LIGO has been described as bold and visionary. Are you agree with this? Uh... <laughs> so LIGO certainly was bold uh, and it was visionary in the sense that the vision that we developed uh, and it, the vision was pretty much in hand by 1980. Uh, that vision turned out to be a correct vision uh, with uh, enormous ultimate uh, scientific payoff. It was bold because the distance that had to be gone from the technology uh, and the achievements of prototype detectors in 1989 when we presented our construction proposal, or 1980 when we uh, started combining our efforts between Caltech and MIT, the distance from there to here was very, very large. And so it was bold to believe that this could achieve, be achieved. But I think in some ways my biggest influence on this uh, was that I had real faith in the experimental team. I'm not an experimenter, I'm a theorist. But I knew these experimenters. I'm a theorist who worked very close to experiment through this entire process. Uh, and I had credibility, and when I told a uh, funding agency that uh, I believed they had a very good chance of success, evidently the funding agency listened. I was told, <laughs> I'm told they listened. And so uh, I think it's an enormous credit to the experimenters, but I did have confidence that they would be able to pull it off, and they did. And has it been difficult to convince the funding agency to fund this project? It was not very difficult to convince the National Science Foundation to fund this project. The program director for gravitational physics in the 1970s, late 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, when this was decisions were being made, was a na man named Richard Isaacson, who himself was a theorist who had made enormous contributions to our understanding of gravitational waves. He was a believer uh, and he worked hand in hand with us to help others at the National Science Foundation understand this. And so things went rather smoothly uh, at the National Science Foundation. We did have 
approximately a two-year delay in the early uh, 1990s uh, in order to get congressional funding. But after this two-year delay, uh, by 1993, Congress, the U.S. Congress, stood behind this firmly all the way till today uh, with no hesitation. Did you expect this discovery in this very moment? I expected the first discovery would be in about 2017. Yeah. So in this <laughs> okay. moment, not in that moment. <laughs> this discovery came in two years earlier than I expected. Okay, perfect. Um, you find yourself particularly at home with science fiction. Uh, do you think it has an important role for our culture? So I find myself at home with science fiction in the sense that I have been able to build collaborations uh, with filmmakers who, who make science fiction movies. Uh, and uh, I think science fiction has a big impact on our culture worldwide. Uh, I wanted to be involved in making a film that would be exciting, would inspire people around the world, particularly young people, about the beauties and the power of science. And so uh, I managed to do that together with uh, Christopher Nolan and his uh, brother Jonathan Nolan. In no other way except such a movie could I influence 100 million people, but they sold approximately 100 million tickets worldwide. And I think it did have a, a significant impact in raising people's awareness, particularly in uh, Korea and China, awareness of, of the beauty and power of science. And, uh, which kind of information uh, gravitational waves can bring to us uh, about the universe? So gravitational waves are extremely different from electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves the only kind of radiation that, uh, of, of waves that we have used previously to, de to study the universe uh, include light, radio waves, x-rays, infrared, uh, gamma rays. These are all oscillations in the electric and magnetic field propagating through space-time. Gravitational waves are the only other kind of wave that can propagate across the universe. Uh, and they are completely different because they are oscillations in the shape of space and time. And because they are so different, because they are produced in very different ways, they are bringing us views of aspects of the universe, phenomena in the universe, that we cannot see electromagnetically. They bring us an entirely new view of the universe. We have never seen black holes collide before, and there was no electromagnetic emission yet discovered from our gravitational wave sources where the two black holes collided. So we learn about black hole collisions that we couldn't learn about before. These collisions, the power output during that collision in a fraction of a second, the first collision, the total power output was 50 times higher than the power from all the stars in the universe put together during this very brief collision. The most powerful explosion of energy that humans have ever detected, except the Big Bang birth of the universe itself, never seen electromagnetically. And this is going to be true over and over again in the future of this field. That We will see many things that are also seen electromagnetically, and by combined observations with electromagnetic waves, gravitational waves, and neutrinos, uh, we will learn wonderful things about gamma ray bursts, about neutron stars and so forth. But we will also see things that uh, we never dreamed of with gravitational waves. There are going to be huge surprises come from gravitational waves. And how you think it will change the research on gravitational waves now that the Virgo interferometer in Italy is ready to join LIGO? Virgo is crucial for the following reason. We need to know where the source of the waves is on the sky. And we get that information primarily by the delay in arrival time of the signal at different locations on Earth. With just two locations in North America, LIGO cannot do that. It requires at least one more detector, Virgo in, in Europe, and then we can triangulate on the sky. We can see where the signals are coming from. We need to know that in order to be able to tell the electromagnetic astronomers uh, and neutrino astrophysicists 
where to look on the sky, uh, where, where is this signal coming from, so that we can begin to do joint observations uh, with different kinds of radiation. So Virgo is absolutely crucial to this future of, uh, of this field. Thank you very much. Thank you.